Hello and uh, welcome to the Ask Blue podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Will Dickinson and Laura Tester from from Custom. Welcome to uh, welcome to the to Blue Star. Welcome to the Ask Blue podcast. It's great to great to have you here. Really pleased that you could uh, join us today. Um, do you want to introduce yourselves, guys, and uh, tell tell me a little bit about um, you know your roles and uh, what, what you do at Custom? Sure, no problem. Thank you for having us. Get you start. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, my name is Will Dickinson. Um, we're Custom SPA. I'm the UK and Ireland Territory Manager. I've been in the, the retail supply chain sector for around 15 years. I've kind of worked from everything from stacking shelves, weight trays. It's uh, a good start. I think good it's a start, strong start, start. Yes. So, distribution like yourself, Richard, uh-huh. uh, working for resellers, selling software solutions uh, for retail operations, uh, and also more recently uh, vendors such as Custom. It's a pretty, pretty strong pedigree in the industry. Uh, Laura? My name is Laura Testa. I'm a Europe sales manager in custom. I joined the company 17 years ago. So this is where I grew my experience in different vertical markets uh, because we'll speak about this, but we go through uh, different markets so like a, retail, industrial, You've got a wider experience than just retail. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. So this Excellent. Is, yep. Well, welcome both of you. Um, I think probably what would be a good start would be, just in case there's a few people out there that don't know custom, do you do you want to tell us a little bit about custom? Just give us a bit of um, a bit about what what the company is, who who you are, what you do. Sure, no problem, Richard. Uh, so, Custom's an Italian based company, we're around thirty years old. Uh, we specialise in digital solutions such as self service, uh, point to sale, and data capture. Uh, we operate in different verticals, kind of specialising really in retail, hospitality, aviation. So, if you yeah. ever go to the airport, which I'm sure you do on lots yeah. of occasions if you get a boarding pass printed or a baggage tag let's use typically it yeah. a custom printer we also do lots in transportation gaming lottery betting is, is there anything you don't do it's quite a wide <laughs> portfolio it definitely is portfolio. yeah yeah we born, sure. we born like a hardware company and then we improved our offers through um software solution also and also uh digitalization uh, solutions so now the offer is very wide uh, so for all the vertical markets that Perfect. we are in contact with great so so a, a lot of you know really wide wide range of topics we, we we could have talked about today from lots of different industries instead what we're going to do is we're going to be, be we're going to be quite focused we're going to talk about retail and and specifically what we're going to talk about is the is, is the rise of online retail the threat that that poses to to physical retail and um, yeah, we, we're going to get. I think we're just going to get straight into that. Uh, we're uh, I've I've prepared a few questions for you. So uh, so first of all, um, you know, let, let's let's talk about what actually is the impact to physical retailers of uh, of of the growth of of online uh, online sales. Yeah. So let let's uh, uh, talk about the online uh, uh, approach. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the spread of e-commerce. Okay. Uh, and made the boundaries uh, between the online shopping and the physical shopping very, very thin. And this is going to be a threat to the uh, retailers, uh, shop, uh, physical retailers. Um, the fact is that uh, uh, especially during the COVID era, the consumer got familiar at purchasing online because there was nothing else that they it could was, do. It was, it was the only choice in, in, in some cases, wasn't it? It was the only choice. Yeah, yeah. In fact, statistics says uh, that 7 to 10 consumers performed online uh, purchases. 7 out, so 70%. Seven, yeah. Yes, exactly. So it uh, made all the uh, consumers and clients very familiar yeah. to the uh, online shopping, okay? And especially there are two group of ages, uh, the very young, so say 16 to 24 years, that had a huge increase of 80% of their online purchases, but also... Well, I had three of those in my house uh, during, <laughs> exactly, during lockdown, exactly, and it was unbelievable the exactly. amount of deliveries that were coming but in from also online. also yeah. the group aged between 25 and 55, they got uh, more than 70% increase, increase of online purchases, and this is a real... Uh, uh, threat. Okay, why? Because these uh, uh, giants on the online they offer a huge variety of low cost items, um, very easy to get. Okay, and so uh, it fell in the uh, hands of this uh, approach. Okay, to the uh, online purchases. So, so it's basically it, it was not just an increase in 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 online purchases, but also 
a, a widening of the demographic of, of, of people that were the types of people that perhaps wouldn't Absolutely, have bought online yes. before that started buying online. Absolutely, okay. yes. And in fact, yeah. if you look at the statistics, there are big, big uh, giants, okay, online giants that they are counting and still the number is increasing. Millions of uh, consumers that are still uh, uh, performing sales. Okay. Yeah. And that's become so, becoming a threat. Yeah. So the so it started or, or increased during COVID and and the the global lockdowns that we had. But that's but so what's interesting is that that's actually continued since since the end yes. of lockdown. So since, yeah. that's where it all started. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, because it became a habit, uh, this permitted the Chinese giant uh, online uh, um, seller. Uh, to enlarge the business, okay, and so to keep going with this kind of uh, this kind of approach. Yeah, perfect. That's good. Um... So if I should say more uh, after, because now of course the COVID here are finished, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you add to this uh, uh, factors like uh, deep geopolitical situations or like mm -hmm. wars, okay, yeah. uh, shortages after the which is an effect of the COVID. Uh, but also inflection, high taxes. Uh, so uh, all this factor made consumer with less money in their pocket. Yeah. Okay. And so this one has increased, okay, the addition uh, to the uh, consumers yeah. that were then forced to the mutated uh, situation, economic, their personal economical situation to keep looking for low cost uh, items through the web so we're all open to perhaps not go for the traditional brands we know and look for cheaper alternatives from from these kind of e-commerce giants as you say yes yeah, yeah, so exactly. people have got less money they're, they're trying to save money by buying online right yeah exactly yeah. and so what they do they give up about uh, branded items okay so they easily give up about branded items yeah. so they use the uh, uh smallest let's say amount of money to perform uh, uh, low cost uh, approaches in the online uh, envir environment and you can buy everything from clothing to tooth flosses i think to stereos yeah I think any it, kind the they, options they have are such endless. a huge amount of offer it's not only clothes mm -hmm. because i do believe that uh still clothes and shoes uh, there are a lot of websites okay but now today it's the offer it's really complete if you go through the apps of these giants okay and you wanna and you start looking through their uh, offered articles it, it takes hours uh, yeah. to to, uh, to understand it's unbelievable the yeah. number number are we are we talking about who are we talking about in terms of some of the online giants I mean I don't want to oh, advertise well, uh, necessarily for so any it changed basically because uh uh, before the the COVID uh, era, uh, there were some giants. Uh, uh, now there are others. Okay, so the, mm, giants like Timo, for instance. Now it's more and more. Uh, yeah, I've never I've never market. used them. They're uh, are they is that a Chinese? Um... They are Chinese, but they have. Uh, um, uh, it, it's strange, okay, because if you go through their headquarters, okay, they pretend to be in Massachusetts, they, they have a legal entity in Ireland, tax-free, mm -hmm. uh, but again, the, they what they do is they have one big hub mm -hmm. store, okay, in, in China, of course, so they are driven by China if they pretend to say they are in Massachusetts or they have legal entities yeah, yeah. in, in in Ireland, but yes, they are Chinese uh, giants, uh, just like Shane, uh, Temu, and uh, so it's moved on from the Alibaba days, moved, where uh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, place an like, order for electric scooter. Yeah, and they moved from wait. Alibaba to this kind of new giants, and there is uh, uh, we'll go through about this, okay? But it is uh, an incredible difference between the lead times, okay? Mm. Because of course. Amazon has this kind of approach, and they have next day delivery. And even, okay. even the same day delivery. I'm, I'm so increasingly or, or if, same uh, day delivery. Yeah, if you order sort of in the morning, often uh, if you order enough stuff, it, it'll it'll often arrive. The st certain items will arrive yeah, the same but day. But they are not equally uh, as much as low cost like uh, Alibaba, like mm. Temu, like Shane. I believe. Okay. So I think we're prepared to wait a little bit longer if we feel we're getting better value in some ways. Not. Yeah. Uh, Alibaba before the COVID, they used to uh, deliver goods uh, easily in four to five week time because they relied on postal services and took very long. Now, 
And now today, if you perform a, a purchase by a chain or by a team, easily you can get your uh, packages delivered within eight to 10 days. So that's making uh, uh, this incredible increase of this uh, online yeah. approach. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to understand the, the appeal there, yeah. So what what is the impact of, of the this? Clearly, there's a rise in uh, in in online sellers, whether they're based in Europe or the US or, or increasingly in China. What's the impact of this increase of, of these sellers on traditional physical more, shops? Yeah, physical shops. Yeah. yeah. Well, I th- I think we've all seen our local high streets have have empty spaces. And I think there is a decline in, in physical shops on the high street. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, one, it's a shame. And, and two, I think retailers having to fight really hard to compete with these online uh, e-commerce platforms because uh, it has a detrimental effect on their profitability. Of course, you have increased costs of, of physical stores themselves. And, you know, I think growth in retail and bricks and mortar retail has predominantly been flat over the past few years since COVID. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a, a challenging environment to uh, to compete in. So they're not just competing with each other anymore; they're now competing with the, uh, um, you know, with 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 online. Because yeah, and I okay. think yeah. think about the online. So they give a twenty four hour a day service, seven days a week service. So whenever you wanted to perform a purchase, uh, it's readily available. Not not many shops who can, no, can stay yeah, open for those sort problem, of hours. The problem, yeah. the challenge for the retailer is that physical shops need to guarantee longer uh, opening times. So, okay, and it means labor cost. And so if we add to the increased labor cost just to give uh, longer av- physical availability to the mm. consumers, okay, you add this, that uh, you have the renting, uh, you have the higher cost of the raw material because what the local shops are uh, presenting to the consumer is um, it's not low cost uh, items it's medium high level cost mm. items so it's a cost yeah. okay and so I mean that, le- that cost of labor is what is one aspect of it and another thing that um, you know we, we found is that and it, this is not across the whole of Europe I think in, in with, this is something in the UK and, and in the Nordics it's not only is the labour costs high, but also it can be difficult to get people at all to uh, to work in the shops. So I think, Lowry, it, it's possibly a little bit different. Yeah, uh, it's, I think it's different because, of course, as you said, it's just a question for you and the Nordics to balance uh, uh, the demand and the offer, okay? Because as long as you have less workers, uh, it's challenging and the workers are less and cost more. So I think you register a, a, an increase on the labour cost. I don't think uh, uh, other countries are sharing the same experience, but equally, you know, when you need to compete, when the challenge is to compete about these online uh, uh, approaches, okay, and when you uh, need to, in a mall, you have shops that need to stay open from uh, nine o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the night, okay, mm-hmm. uh, so you need to put uh, extra workers, and so the, in general, the labor cost, it's going to be... Uh, a cost to the uh, brick and mortar yeah. approach. Well, there's okay. no additional cost to having your website open 24 Exa- hours exactly, a day. Is there? Exactly, uh... because it's all virtual. Yeah, okay? yeah. It's all vir- virtual. And so if you add to this, uh, the cost of the facilities, uh, as I said, the, ma- the raw material, but also the way the um, physical retailers need to handle their uh, warehouse. Because mm-hmm. as a consumer, if you go in a shop, okay, the shop needs to, uh, to uh, provide you uh, any kind of sizes, uh, in any kind of colors. So meaning that uh, even the local inventory must be uh, high enough to yeah. don't lose the sale. Yeah. So to, yeah. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating if you do. I mean, I don't really shop that often in my local high street. I tend to shop online, to be honest. But when well, I do go into store, so this is all your fault, Will. It's all my fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. All my fault, but when I do go into store and when I do make the commitment to save the high street, then if the product isn't there which I want, so if there's a pair of jeans but they don't have the right color or the right size, then ultimately you walk out the shop and you lose the sale. So it's really important for retailers to know what stock they have where and have the right stock at all times. And if it's not available, then make it easy for me to get the uh, the jeans delivered to my front door while yeah. I'm in the store. I mean, I would always, I think, especially for clothing, I would definitely always want to buy in a shop if I if I can. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, it's frustrating if they don't have the right size or um, yeah. Um, 
but I still, I'll, I'll still go there and, and yeah, maybe then that turns into an online sale of, to get the right size afterwards. But uh, yeah, if if the if the shop's got the technology to be able to help me to, uh, you know, they'll say, look, we'll we'll have it here tomorrow, or we we'll, we can deliver it to you for free. Then then that that kind of thing would 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 help, and that that's the sort of thing that would would keep me me going back there. But uh, so there's a lot of challenges basically for um, physical shops. What um, but it sounds like there's probably also some factors that are discouraging online commerce as well. Can we can we talk a little bit about that? What's what are the what are the factors discouraging online commerce? I, I think one is uh, the trustability of those sites. So yeah. we're all putting our details in, so from you know email addresses, passwords, sometimes payment details, and where's that information going? So I think it kind of breathes a yeah, I think there's a lot to do for the e-commerce websites to gain as much trust as the, the brands we have here in Europe who are operating today. Uh, also, adware on the websites. Where are you clicking through? What cookies are there? Are there any kind of phishing emails within that? And it's very, very much then known at this moment in time. Yeah. So security. Security is still an issue. Yeah. So because there are identity thefts and then you can have uh, easily your credit card credentials stolen but also other kind of security problems like uh, data breaches uh, phishing uh, uh, but also fake uh, fake website uh, where you perform uh, purchases and then nothing is going to happen yeah. and so this is what uh, uh, it's making uh, uncomfortable so one of the threat okay of the online uh, purchases that not the the only one mm. uh, oh yeah and i also think kind of outside the security aspect it's almost kind of it playing into the e-commerce that which we've been talking about is the kind of the fast fashion kind of messaging really yeah. so the products you're receiving are they good value well they definitely have a, a cheap upfront cost but how long are they going to last mm. is it something you just throw away in a couple of weeks if it doesn't work or is it a shirt you wear twice because the quality you will be getting from these websites is not the same as you get from the traditional high street retailer. So again, we have to ask ourselves a question from a sustainability point of view, are we making the right choice by shopping through these uh, websites? Yeah, so basically the, the quality's poor and, and potentially also quite quite bad for the environment as well buying from those places, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, other aspect about uh, uh, this kind of uh, approach is that uh, there is no uh, interaction between the buyer and the seller, mm -hmm. okay? So you cannot build up any uh, loyalty customers, okay? And uh, especially when it comes to return, return might be might be uh, an issue because sometimes return is not easy because returning uh, items to China mm. is not allowed. It's more costing not. more than having purchased. So so you easily throw it away. It's not as easy as taking it back to your local Marks and Spencers down the road, is it? That's yeah. uh, so it's a different yeah. different it's, challenge. It's yeah, it's different. It's different. So when we talk, I mean, is uh, it even possible at all to? To read that, I don't even know how so, I would go about uh, sending Timo, something. Timo is changing. I don't know how long will it last because Timo has just started. It's a, just a, uh, a new approach, okay? Because they are um, approaching the return in a, an unbelievable way, okay? Because if uh, the item that you are purchasing, it's a very low cost item and you want to return it, okay? They simply say, okay, it's not a problem. I'm going to credit to you the uh, amount that you paid and you keep the item with you or you throw it away or you give it away to whatever, whoever you want to and they have this kind of approach. I don't know uh, whether it's going to last, what it's going to happen sooner or later, it's gonna, uh, they're going to stop it because I don't believe because think S about doesn't it. doesn't sound sustainable in, in on all, any exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And when we go back to sustainability, so, and when we uh, go back to uh, ethically manufactured items, so you cannot control, so labor costs are extremely low, but you cannot control even if these items are produced by minor people, okay? So, uh, these, they don't have an ethical approach. So they, it's, only... it's difficult to get the accountability, isn't it? With, uh, you know, the, there, are, there are brands, European brands that we, we've known for years and years, well-established brands, and I think they've, they've got a, a certain amount of trust and credibility. Um, and and I think you know new players coming into the market where you know they're, they're, everything's manufactured a long a long way away, mm -hmm. and, and 
you know, yeah. That's not to say that they are behaving unethically, but we it's it's much more difficult to know whether they are or not. There's like like I say, there's there's, there's a lack of accountability there. I think less yeah. visibility. From, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And you need to think that uh, the uh, moving of the market to the five point or industry where sustainability is now part of our discussions uh, everywhere we go everybody is talking green okay so we are participating to some tenders mm -hmm. uh, industrial tenders in, the, in transportation and what we have been told by our customers is that the uh, being green it's worth in 30% of the tender okay mm -hmm. so you get you get points mm -hmm. okay to win the tender if you are green and sustainable it's definitely so we, becoming increasingly important. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you go to the hotel, wherever you go. So the more green you are, uh, the better it is. Why? Because still the consumers, they are eco-friendly. So, and this is the real challenge, okay? Because uh, online approach is not, definitely is not. Okay. So when you, as long as you buy a shirt for three or four euros, so it's the raw material, it's yeah, very good. Yeah, it comes poor. over from China in a plane. Absolutely. It's, uh... But easily you clean them twice and you need to throw them away. So they are not long, as, long lasting items. So the plastics they use in different articles. Okay. So that's it. And uh, because the uh, world wide is pushing against the five point old industry where sustainability and being green, it's a good thing. It's a needed thing okay. okay consumers are uh, eco-sensitive eco-sensitive and this is one of the challenges retailers should look at uh to uh overcome the threat definitely i agree with that okay so i think another thing that we need to talk about is uh how can physical retailers actually overcome the threat from online Okay. Yeah, I think embracing an omni-channel experience for the consumer is key to success to, to fight that threat. Uh, having that seamless shopping experience right from your house, online, on social media, right through to purchasing in store or collecting uh, a product which you have bought online. Having a 24-7 experience, meaning that you, know, you can buy any product at any time throughout the week, uh, is, is key to, to driving that sale. And ultimately footfall, so embracing technology such as click and collect services can drive extra footfall through to the retail shops. And then hopefully the retailer with a good customer experience can uh, have a better attach rate of selling some other items when we actually take that first step through the through into the high street. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, you, you touched on technology there. We'll let, let's, let's dive in a little bit more on the technology. Let, let's talk about that. We, you know, we're all technology companies. We should... Uh, uh, we should get into that a little bit more. So how can brick and mortar retailers use technology to create a more engaging and personalized in-store experience? Yeah, like William said, the challenge for the retailer is to give a new shopping experience to the consumers and new formats. Okay, mm -hmm. what does it mean? A lot of things. So for instance, there are uh, large scale uh, retailer chains that they already opened some uh, uh, specific shop on uh, focused items. Mm -hmm. That's one case. So or, smaller uh, shops, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. specific items, okay, to better target specific uh, uh, customers as yeah. well. It's just like a Carrefour and Palm, they already did it, okay? Uh, when I talk about uh, introducing new formats, okay, it's about uh, uh, outside of the, of the shop, okay? It's a tentative that the retailer do to enlarge the opportunity of, of shopping, which is not only in store, but a combination and integration of technologies like also taking advantage of the uh, on, their online offer, okay, which means a lot of things. A consumer can buy online, can get the article delivered in-house, but when it comes to return, of the, which makes the online shopping very uncomfortable, if you just get one article and it doesn't fit or it's not to your expectation, you can easily bring it back to your local store. Yeah, so okay? having a shop that's local, that's easy to return it's stuff easy. to. Yes, is, exactly, is, because is the, the yeah, return, yeah. the not easy return for the online shopping, it's a threat, okay? It's yeah. a weakness, okay? But the, the physical retailers have to have the right technology in store to allow that return to be brought back to the, the, the it, smaller local store. It, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So another challenge could be uh, to improve uh, uh, different formats, meaning uh, 
uh, think about uh, you are performing a purchase, an online, online purchase, and the store doesn't have, uh, or you go equally into a store and you don't have available your size, your preferred color. So the, the store can easily send to you uh, those kiosk and uh, uh, kiosk lock, sorry, locker, uh, click yeah. and collect lockers, okay, where uh, the store can deliver your article into the locker. Yes. So meaning that the consumer can have an extended time to go at any time, daytime or night time, to go to the locker and click and collect yeah. the items that he ordered online or into the store. So this is uh, a tentative for the um, retailers to enlarge this virtual opportunity to give a four, 24 hour uh, a day service to their uh, customers, okay? But also there are other uh, technology supporting this kind of approach, like uh, vending machines. Vending reason. machines, uh, and also the use of AI. I think you'll see, especially in collection at the moment, we're used to kind of re retail as far as non-food. I think you'll see where the rise in collection lockers for grocery as well, mm -hmm. temperature controlled lockers yeah. with new technologies such as age estimation or age verification, which will allow consumers to collect prohibited goods such as alcohol exactly. and tobacco and vapes. So I think this concept of having a smart city and having uh, the ability to collect any item any time of the day will only improve with the AI coming Yeah, in. I guess that's that's an extension of, you know, the, the, the shop doesn't have to stay open 24 hours a day as long as they've, they've got a secure facility where consumers can collect from. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Sure, it's that's point, it. Yeah. And if you think about Europe and the um, European uh, uh, Union funds, okay, there are a lot of funds for the digitalization. So uh, they're pushing towards the smart cities, for instance, okay, where this kind of locker solution or formats, okay, are well um, accepted, okay, because they are also eco friendly, okay. And so as long as you can click and collect a lot of goods inside a locker, so less, you know, trucks moving mm -hmm. and uh, you have one collection point. So yeah, yeah. Mars City are an important uh, uh, task, okay, yeah, yeah. thanks to these uh, founds, because founds are about the digitalization and that's what we are talking about. So uh, investing on digital digitalization is what the retailers need to do to be more efficient in the offer. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah, I guess I mean a lot of this is about convenience and, and allowing consumers to to interact with a with a physical store in a same you know with the same level of convenience that they get online. What about actually in the in the store itself? I mean, what kind of technologies can retailers implement to enhance that in-store experience. Yeah, I think that's all important. Once you do get the, the consumer through the door, that, that experience has to be personalized uh, to, to make them feel special at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So anything- We from, all like that, right? Yeah, so you know, you can uh, utilize customer loyalty schemes to you know promote certain items which are specific to that uh, customer. Uh, you can do that via interactive uh, digital signage augmented reality as well as coming in so you can uh -huh. try on different things like sunglasses uh gamification so if we're staying in the shops for a longer amount of time we're more likely to buy some goods uh and then also when we have decided what we're going to buy we don't want to be waiting in a queue to check out i mean mm. a christmas coming up i've been in a queue for 10 minutes and you know you're hot you're bothered you have a coat on you have lots of shopping bags already who, it's who has time for that these days yeah <laughs> uh so having us uh, the ability to either self-scan and check out or go to a self-service checkout and quickly and efficiently pay using some digital payment i think is, yeah, is all yeah. important for the retailers to embrace i think that's that's really important a cool thing i mean I'm this um at a one of my local supermarkets they're uh, they're actually offering me price incentives to use the self-scanning technology so if I, i've got i can only unlock certain deals if i if i scan in and 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 use their smart shopping app i think i might have given away the name of the retailer by, <laughs> yeah, by yeah. saying that but i get i i can unlock some personalized discounts right. by using the technology that they have available which i think is a, you know it makes me use it because i'll do it just to get the price in as long as the retailer are targeting uh, your needs and your habits yeah they are they yeah, which can is cool, also yeah. uh pre-alert you okay via online emailing or any kind of approach mm, to yeah, you yeah. before you enter into the shop just letting you know that you can have a discounted item according to your 
preferred selections. Okay, so it, it works. I mean, I, I, I'm a sucker for a discount. I'm from I'm from Yorkshire, so uh, it's uh, it's you know discounts. I think definitely is is one of the things that works. Yeah. And talking about us um, in shop experience, okay, about assisted sales. Uh, uh, think about those uh, uh, brands. Uh, so to, more talking about luxury brands, okay, where you have a, a very expensive uh, articles, okay, in the shop. Assisted sales mean having mobile devices, okay, where the assistant stands beside, okay, the customer to avoid queued because sometimes when you are buying a very expensive item, you need to make sure that the uh, the purchase by the consumer is done very, very quickly before it changes his mind. Mm. So this uh, approach with assistant sales, with mobile devices, uh, leads you to the uh, checkout and then you go to the cashier only to make the payment, or maybe you can also perform the payment in the mobile device inside the shop. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to make sure that also these uh, high value articles are uh, purchased before a customer can change his mind queuing at the cashier. Definitely, and I think you know, so even, even advances in payment technology, things like SoftPos, for example, yeah. uh, that makes it really, really easy for, for someone to use an existing mobile device, you know, an Android device with NFC to take the payment. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, a really good example. It's uh, about yeah. short times, okay, yeah. to perform uh, sales. So everything needs to be very, very quick and performing, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, anything else about customer experience? Uh, yeah, I, I think kind of especially with the automated digital technology, which retailers can implement, such as self-service checkouts, you can also look at AI kind of that feeds into Industry 5.0 we were looking at earlier. So, for example, if you're at an airport and your flight's late and then you have to get a connecting flight, uh, you can go to an interactive kiosk, scan your boarding pass to check when's your flight, is the next flight left, has it been delayed? But equally, you can utilise AI and then say, okay, this, this customer usually goes to the duty-free shop but he hasn't got time. Can we offer him a discount now? And then he can purchase at that point and then collect it on his return journey. So it's really interesting things you can do with yeah. AI coupled with uh, interactive technology. Definitely, yeah. And I guess I suppose one of the one of the other things that one of the big advantages that online um, selling has is that they seem to be very, very good, uh, and actually sometimes very, very bad at offering you, you, you looking looking at your browsing history, looking at what what you what you what you've bought, what you're about to buy, and offering you complementary products to go with it. And then also, you know, a bad example of that would be I bought a washing machine a week ago, so they keep offering me washing machines. I bought um, one. I bought one a week ago. I don't need one for another five, hopefully another five <laughs> years. But uh, so, so I think some online retailers do that really well. Some do it, you know, not quite so well. But obviously, that's that's that seems to be easier online. What can what can a, a physical store do to offer that that same sort of um, recommendation service? So basically, collecting and Analyzing customer data allows the retailers to understand the preferences and the behavior of the clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the possibility to per personalize all this kind of data and information are making uh, personalized, uh, more personalized marketing actions, uh, loyalty programs, uh, uh, but also uh, in-store promotions tailored to specific customer, but also a better uh, warehouse management, inventory mm -hmm. management, yeah. okay? Uh, for instance, uh, new technologies uh, like uh, uh, control rooms, you know, I don't know if you ever heard about this, uh, these control rooms, what they are Tell about. Tell us a bit more about it, yeah. Okay, it's about innovative, uh, innovative digital ecosystems, okay, where um, data data's, uh, uh, streams uh, and uh, audio video signals okay are uh, displayed to um, big uh, um, video walls or this kind of stuff okay mm -hmm. uh, to um, um, make real time management of all the data at the same time okay and uh, this is about the retailers okay especially when we talk about the franchising they have different uh, store and it's a way to collect all the information uh -huh. but there is there is other technology about data driven decision rooms. It's about a two D three D way of collecting information. Okay, so that uh, customers uh, uh, not customers sorry but the retailer can have an immersive display environments where they can share all the information at 
and presenting all the data in a cleared uh, way, uh, shared way on all the uh, different uh, facilities and in the same language. Okay, so, and this is how um, the retailers can implement any kind of uh, data uh, and analyze them and uh, uh, uses for a better customer uh, approach or inventory approach. So they're taking the information about that consumer, uh, sharing it across yes. their network. They, and, uh... they take information of each store from yeah. their own software, okay, and this control room and uh, 3D data visualization concept, they put everything together, okay, like a single store cannot uh, uh, do. Mm. Because uh, think about uh, retailers uh, having shops uh, in the Far East uh, rather than the UK, rather than in the America. And so mm. these control rooms or 3D data uh, visualization room, the concept is to have all the data together, to analyze the data, to share the data, okay, and have it ready for uh, different uh, um, scopes. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. that could be really useful, especially if you're analyzing just something simple as the layout of a store and what product is in what location. If you're selling lots of items like a handbag, say in New York, but you're not in, in London and the store layout is slightly different, yes, there might be a different trend in that market, but it also might be where you position that product. So I think having yeah, that yeah. kind of holistic view is, is really beneficial. Yeah. I mean, I suppose that's, that's, that's quite closely related to, you know, if you compare how a, a physical store needs to compete with an online retailer online retailers have apparently everything available all of the time anywhere yeah Whereas but they, a, a... they don't control uh customer needs they they cannot control customer needs no, customer no. expectations so they cannot focus and target uh, uh anything to their customers because there is no interaction and equally customers they don't know anything about the seller they cannot chat to the seller mm -hmm. okay yeah so that's an important uh challenge for the retailers uh, to uh, overcome this yeah. uh, threat. Uh, definitely. And I, I guess, you know, an online retailer apparently has everything available, whereas a physical retailer can only fit so many products and, and so, you know, a certain amount of quantity into their store. So how, you know, how can technology assist a physical store to, um, you know, basically to, to compete with the vast product selections that you get on, online? I think implementing a smart inventory management system with kind of RFID technology or barcode technology, which we all know, uh, helps the retailers identify what stock holding they have. Uh, Real-time data analytics can help with that. We've already talked about that with the control room and how you can view that data. Uh, that can reduce out-of-stock situations. I think we mentioned before, if you go to a retail store and something isn't there, then we essentially won't buy that item. Uh, and also, I know around 80% of uh, retailers are looking at how to reduce loss and shrinkage at the moment. So having an, an inventory management system, which is across all of your sites and distribution centers, really key to, to help with those kind of uh, challenges. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, so uh, so I guess that's, that's, that's AI again, isn't it? Basically that's, um, you know, AI linking, you know, showing the, the, the data across a whole range of stores um, is, is, is helping the the, the retailers to, you know, not just with, you know, understanding the customer, but putting that into practical use in the stores and, and, and showing them, you know, things like, as you say, shrinkage and, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And also utilizing multiple digital touch points for when you are in store will absolutely help the retailer uh, have the right stock. So it's important, like I said before, as a consumer that we have the right stock available. And in any slow moving stock, if we're not purchasing the stock the retail has on the shelf, it's really bad for their cash flow. And ultimately, they end up having to discount those products, which is obviously bad for profitability. Exactly. So you can discount items at the end of the day, but the margins will be very low. And so yeah. that's not targeted about the retailers. So yeah, it's uh, we not going to help to keep your shop no. open, is it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. marginality is an issue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you can, they can, stores can also do that, some other kind of clever things as well to utilize what stock they have. I mean, most retailers traditionally have been set up to ship you everything at home from a central distribution point. However, we're returning to store a lot of the time. So it's good for the retailers to try and see, can they supply something which has been returned to store to another person who's ordered online? So just trying to keep those stock levels yeah. moving and release that kind of cash flow. To make it more yeah. efficient, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, how, how about the checkout aspect of, um, of this, you know, how, how can, you know, 
what about the checkout experience? How, how do people improve that? How do retailers improve that to, to, to remain competitive? Yeah, so we've touched on the, the checkout experience already. So with the self-service solutions and having uh, more automated payments as well, and digital payments. And I think one of the major things is also the return aspect. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked about before, some of these online retailers say, okay, you don't have to return. So you absolutely have to compete with that in some way. And lockers, which we've already talked about, is one way of doing that. It gets the consumers through the door. And also, uh, it kind of streamlines that return process because we all remember bad returns process and it's the last thing in our mind, yeah. especially if we've concentrated on the, the consumer journey up until uh-huh. that point. Uh, so there's kind of a few terms coming around. So I'm not sure if you've heard of slippers distance before, Richard. Um, not really, no, no. What's uh... So slippers distance is... is ability to collect or return a parcel while you're still wearing your slippers and dressing gown from your front door okay That's so there's a real drive and there's lots of acronyms uh within uh the collection uh sector at the moment so i thought i might test your knowledge and and those at home uh, here we go <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's embarrass the host <laughs> <laughs> we'll try i'll take over and yeah okay, okay. so right. I've, I've, I've lost the first question but okay let, let's let, give me something give me an easy one Okay, Pudo. Have you heard of Pudo? You know what? I actually heard Pudo for the first time uh, yesterday. So um, Pudo is, um, has, he's, he's, he's pick up, um, no, I can't remember the... No, you're right. Half right. Pick up. 50%. Uh, drop, off. drop off. Yeah. There we go. So I think we can give him a point. Yeah, yeah, okay. one point, one okay. point. So okay. it gets slightly harder now, but the structure is... is it's going to be pretty similar to, to give you a hint. Okay. Bopis. Okay. So this, well, this one I know. So that's buy online, pick up in store, right? Very good. You, yeah. might, you might get 100% here. Okay. Boris. Okay. Um, so definitely, okay. Buy online, return in store. Very good. Okay. And I think this is probably more of an American acronym, but Bopat. Okay. Um, so buy online. Pick up at car four. Oh, oh, oh it's curbside. 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 Oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Very good. Cool. Yeah, no, that's, um, yeah, definitely, um, I, I think uh, um, there's a lot of ap- acronyms coming through, and, and I guess it just shows the how this technology is becoming. The new tendencies. Yeah, yeah, it's becoming more widely accepted. Once you have an acronym for something, you know, you said it so many times, you can't even be bothered to say, buy online pick up at curbside anymore i think it shows how how widely accepted these uh the, these kind of things are so um you know um we, we've spoken quite a lot about the different you know the, the 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 challenges the the rise of online the technology that's that's needed let's bring it back to to your company to custom what what sort of technology can uh, um can custom offer what what makes custom a value a valued partner in the uh, in in this in this area well, customer success has largely been down to our collaborative and agile approach to the marketplace. We're able to support partners with different technologies throughout the supply chain and, and retail sectors. Yeah, I mean, I, in my experience, you've got pretty much one of the widest ranges of products uh, out there. So yeah, yeah, so anything from self-service to mobile devices for stock management uh, to tablets for assisted selling, uh, printers for self-checkout solutions, point-of-sale terminals. Uh, we typically have a, a solution to meet most of uh, the, the retailers' needs and also help our partners uh, try and uh, help their customers in other areas they're not normally used to. Uh, we also work along multiple different channels, multiple different sectors, and you know we have a, a strong partner network, but we also work with a lot of what, our, what perhaps our partners would see as competitors from our ODM business, and we actually design and manufacture printers, some of the kind of the, the bigger brand tier one uh, manufacturers out mm-hmm. there so whether you whether you know it or not you, you're probably probably using a custom product out there so uh, exactly yeah, yeah. anything from a, a cash routine to a self-service checkout if you see a green bezel yeah it's not our ip but it's typically custom or or, or something similar yeah yeah so green bezel sticking out of a kiosk or a ticket printer or a parking meter that's 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 a good sign that it's custom inside yeah yeah absolutely yeah. good good no that's great and and you know i think i think that that wide range the fact that you know to potentially you can get um lots of different solutions all from from the same vendor is, is is certainly an advantage and uh yeah i mean we've covered a lot of stuff today a lot of uh 
a lot of interesting trends in the market. I think we've looked really closely at the at the technology challenges there, and and you know specifically about how how custom can help at, at the end there. I, I would definitely encourage people to you know to reach out to to Blue Star to um, to Will to Laura to the whole custom team um, across Europe and and you know get in contact with us. Uh, really really appreciate the the time today and and then you know interesting conversation thanks for testing my knowledge to its absolute uh, limits in in terms of acronyms and that sort of thing and uh yeah thanks um, thanks to blue star for inviting us and giving us this opportunity to talk about us it's a pleasure that's great thank you richard cheers yes thanks so much okay.